This video will age poorly. I just wanted to get that out of the way before everything goes to hell in a handbasket in a few years' time. We all know it well. A lot of things tend to be a blur when you're in Las Vegas. You get distracted by the bright lights and glamour, and suddenly you're thousands in the hole and being introduced to a casino enforcer named Manny. I would guess a few of these teams will reach that point with this draft in a few years' time. Let's get to the picks. With the first pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trayvon Walker, linebacker, Georgia. Nobody knew what the Jags were going to do here. Doug Peterson wanted Iquonu, Bulky wanted Walker, and Shad Khan wanted Hutchinson. Sounds like Jacksonville to have chaos behind the scenes. At the end of the day, Bulky somehow ended up winning like always. Trayvon is a physical freak which is why they were so infatuated with him. Why he shot up draft boards like a cannon in the weeks before the draft. Do you trust Jacksonville to develop him, though? He wasn't used as a typical edge rusher at Georgia. Knowing the Jags' instability, I fear for his future. Best case scenario, he's traded in three years to kickstart another rebuild. The Detroit Lions select Aiden Hutchison. Defensive end, Michigan. This is a perfect pick for Detroit. It fills so many needs for them. Not just in his ability and presence in the locker room, but think marketing. The local boy grew up in the area, became a Wolverine, and now gets to play with his hometown NFL team? The Lions can sell him as the face of their defense right now. He doesn't even have to be good. This dude can help them sell tickets on his own. Absolute slam dunk, no matter what happens to him from here on out. The Houston Texans select Derek Stingley Jr. Defensive back, LSU. The Texans pretty much needed everything, so they could have randomly shot fish in a barrel and come up with something decent. Stingley is an excellent corner that profiles as an elite shutdown guy at the next level. The only risk is injuries. The dude did have Liz Frank surgery, and that kind of injury tends to hurt skill positions like cornerback. Even then, he performed well at the Combine and at his pro day. My main worry isn't with him, but with Houston fucking him up. Don't you dare do it, Texans! The New York Jets select Sauce Gardner, <laughs> defensive back, Cincinnati. If his chain is any indication, he already spent a decent chunk of his rookie signing bonus. That flash and pizzazz will work well in New York. Not to mention Sauce Gardner is a damn good corner, one that's one of the most touted the Jets have selected since Darrell Rivas. A shutdown defender is a necessity in the modern NFL. And with the AFC East having the likes of Diggs, Waddle, and Hill, New York needs it badly. Perhaps sauce is it. The New York football giant select, Kayvon Thibodeau, defensive end, wow. Oregon! Somewhere in Dallas, Jerry Jones is crushing a 10-gallon hat full of babies under a vice. The Cowboys wanted Thibodeau bad. And while his stock fell from what was a potential number one pick, he still offers incredible upside as an edge. Gifted by the gods with athleticism, Kayvon should be an immediate threat to every tackle he faces at the next level. Yes, even against the Cowboys. Shitposter and me was hoping the Giants would fuck this up like they did in the past, but alas, they used their heads. We lament this loss. The Carolina Panthers select Ikem Ikwanu. Tackle, North Carolina State. Carolina desperately needed offensive line help in this draft. I figured they'd have gone quarterback here, but when your blindside blocker is Cam Irving, you need all the aid you can get. Ikwanu probably has the most upside of any tackle in this draft, but he's relatively raw. He has plenty of size and strength to become a premium tackle in this league, but he'll need time to develop. Kinda tough to do when he'll be expected to be a day one starter. Even for his project status, he should be an immediate upgrade. That's depressing. My question, though, is at QB. They can't trot out Sam Darnold again, can they? Matt Corral did fall to them in the third round, but he needs time in his own right. They did try for Baker Mayfield, but with Cleveland having no leverage while demanding too much, the trade for him fell through. I think they may just wait for him to be cut. The New York Giants select Evan Neal, tackle, Alabama. The Giants are making sensible picks. Can we get Dave Gettleman back? I miss my humor with the NFL draft. Neal was the perfect pick for them to fall to seven since they need an immediate replacement for Nate Solder. To be fair, a wooden plank might do better than what Solder's declining skills have done in New York. Neal is probably the most NFL-ready tackle out of this class. Best of all, he's played right tackle in college, so fits immediate need for the Giants. We may lament our loss of hilarity, but we can relish in old regrets. Kadarius Tony has demanded a trade out. And while he's probably traded for a fifth round pick, New York won and reached for a wideout in the second round with a skill set of Kadarius Tony. God, Dave Gettleman was so fucking terrible. The Atlanta Falcons select 
Drake London. Oh. oh. Wide receiver. Okay. USC. Falcons fans may bitch about this pick, but here are some names to consider. Olamide Zacchaeus, Auden Tate, Damier Bird, Kaderil Hodge. That was Atlanta's wide receiver depth chart before this pick. This may have been a slight reach, but it was a desperate, desperate need. Even if Matt Ryan is gone, I can't exaggerate how important it was to pick a wide out here. The offense can't just be Kyle Pitts. London will be expected to take a big roll out of the gate. And they'll get plenty of chances to do so. Atlanta's starting a much needed rebuild. Time is on his side there. The Seattle Seahawks select Charles Cross, tackle Mississippi State. Seattle meet your Dwayne Brown replacement. Cross is the last of the really damn good tackles that are in this class. And while the Seahawks are currently running around like chickens with their heads cut off, blindside tackle should be set. They'll be going with the QB competition between Drew Locke and Geno Smith, which screams the excellence that about six wins can bring to a franchise. Oh, the joys of keeping Carroll and Schneider around. Cross will hopefully see better days in his future. It may be a few years, though. The New York Jets select Garrett Wilson, wide receiver, Ohio State. With a big-time weapon like Garrett Wilson, the Jets are making a major statement. They ride and die with Zach Wilson. Having reliable wideouts was an issue for them last season thanks to injuries and underperformance. Corey Davis is decent, but not a true number one. The Jets, to have any success moving forward, they'll need weapons to aid their signal caller. Wilson with Elijah Moore and Davis should be the fix the doctor ordered. In theory. The New Orleans Saints select Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State. This is where the fun begins. The top 10 was rather regimented, but New Orleans saw a run on wideouts happening and traded up with Washington to take both a compliment and an insurance policy for Michael Thomas. The receiver position for the Saints is very thin after him, and it showed in how poorly they fared on offense last season. There are questions as to how Thomas will return, but having Olave as a plan B on a thin core is absolutely needed. You may think this will bring about order, but you'd be mistaken. The Detroit Lions select Jamison Wilman Williams. Whoa! Wide receiver. Alabama. The only reason Jamison Williams fell this far in the draft was due to a torn ACL. With advances in medical technology, it isn't the death sentence for skill positions that it once was. Detroit had to pounce on an elite option, so they ship off a relatively modest sum to move up 20 positions to poach Williams from any other suitor. The best thing is that Jamison won't be expected to make an immediate impact. His explosiveness, game-changing ability, and attributes should be a huge addition to their passing game for whomever the future Lions QB is. The Philadelphia Eagles select Jordan Davis, defensive tackle, Georgia. Three straight trade-ups in the draft. Welcome to Chaos Land. Philadelphia had a shit ton of ammo to play with, and they shot up the boards to make sure they got the next Fletcher Cox. Jordan Davis is a guy I wanted on the Steelers due to need and scheme fit, but Davis works as a three-tech as well. The main complaint about him is that he's a two-down lineman who isn't a great fit for the modern game, but you can always use a presence in the middle of the D-line. It forces offenses to plan around you. That's why they were so valuable in the 90s and 2000s. With Davis's athletic gifts, should be the same. The Baltimore Ravens select Kyle Hamilton, defensive back, Notre Dame. The Ravens were poached of a perfect fit for the defensive line in Jordan Davis. All's fair in love and war, but Baltimore still could address other issues with this pick. Here it's the first safety off the board in Kyle Hamilton who dropped down draft boards for the reason of not being a super sexy pick. He's still pretty damn solid and should play an immediate role as a box safety. Although I don't know if that appeases the fan base considering they traded Marquise Brown to the Cardinals for a first round pick. Wait, he fetched a first? I know Brown still has untapped upside, but he got that return? Then again, with DeAndre Hopkins being busted for PEDs and suspended for six games, it doesn't look as outrageous in hindsight. Somehow, Dallas looks even worse by accepting garbage for Amari Cooper an age ago. The Houston Texans select Kenyon Green, guard Texas A&M. It's the same situation as the Stingley pick. Houston has so many holes to fill that anything would be considered reasonable. Kenyon Green may not have been the best interior lineman of this draft, but he checks off a few criteria. He fits the Texans' scheme well. Offensive guard is a position of incredible weakness for them, and Green is a local product from Texas A&M. At school shits out offensive linemen like a man after a meal at Chipotle. Unless the Texans decide to be the Texans, he should be all right. It's hard to fuck up these kind of picks. The Washington Commanders select Jahan Dotson, wide receiver, Penn State. 
kind of perplexed as to why Washington ended up trading down in the first place if they were going to go wide receiver with this pick. Nothing against Jahan Dotson, I liked a lot of what I saw out of him at Penn State, but why not just take a Lave if you were thinking wide out? Is Dotson better complement Terry McLaurin? McLaurin is still a commie long term? Maybe it's a plan B in case everything goes to shit. And by everything going to shit, I mean Dan Snyder trying to pull a fast one on not only the IRS, but the NFL owners themselves. He's alleged to pulling an Arthur Anderson and having separate accounting books. If this has legs, he's so fucked. And I will publicly celebrate his demise like it should have been done 20 years ago. The Los Angeles Chargers select Zion Johnson, guard Boston College. Chargers were rumored to be gunning for a wideout to add another weapon to their offense, but most of the really good ones were long gone by this point. So they move on to the next big need for the team on the offensive line. They need a replacement for Brian Bulaga, but they can shift out someone to right tackle if need be. The forgotten LA team is trying their best to protect their prize quarterback. And I don't blame them. It's always wise to do so. In this case, Johnson should be an immediate asset. The Tennessee Titans select Traylon Burks. Wide receiver, Arkansas. So you may be asking yourself two questions. How the hell are the Titans selecting here, and why the fuck are they drafting a wide receiver? Well, if you want that answer, I hope you're ready to take in some radiation. A.J. Brown is gone. Tennessee couldn't agree to terms on a new contract, so he leaves for greener pastures. Figuratively and literally. He's now an eagle, and he will hopefully soar high in an offense led by Jalen Hurts. A.J.'s going to be paid like it regardless. A four-year, $100 million contract worth $57 million guaranteed. Debo Samuel sitting on a couch fuming at everyone else getting paid besides him. Traylon Burks has some ridiculously sized shoes to fill with Brown God. Traylon, you're entering a team desperate to get to a Super Bowl with questions at quarterback while shedding talents at wideout and tight end over the past few seasons. If you thrive, the rewards will be great. If not, you'll unfairly become the whipping boy of an entire fan base. I don't envy the pressure he's going to be under to perform immediately. At least Malik Willis will get time to develop. What the hell did he fall to the third round? The New Orleans Saints select Trevor Penning. Tackle, Northern Iowa. Teron Armstead's departure left a gaping hole in their offensive line. And Trevor Penning is the Saints' attempt at fixing it. Penning is still raw, but an absolute behemoth. If they develop him properly, New Orleans will all but forget the contributions of Armstead. Best running backs are those that have a great line to run behind, don't you know? Also, here's the Honey Badger has needed help for a secondary dealing with defections. He's coming home, New Orleans. Be ready. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Kenny Pickett. Okay. Quarterback, Pittsburgh. The successor to the leader of men. The inner yinzer in all of us swells with pride. Almost 40 years ago, the Steelers passed on Dan Marino in the first round to select Senor Sack Gabe Rivera. Today, they hope to rectify that mistake, even if Pickett is nowhere near Marino's caliber. I can hear the derision about this pick from all across football. Ooh, his hands are tiny. He played in a weak ACC. It's for me to fan service pick. You know what I think about all of that? You can suck my dick. He won't be expected to start immediately, but once he does, we know the Steelers are going to the Super Bowl, at least in marketing. This also includes drafting a wide receiver with character issues in the second round. George Pickens will become a pro bowler that will run himself out of town in five years. It is set in stone. The Kansas City Chiefs select Trent McDuffie, defensive back, Washington. Chiefs need an immediate replacement for the departing Traverius Ward. This trade up and pick is hopefully the answer to those woes. To be fair, they had more than enough holes to fill with the departure of Tyree Kill, but with McDuffie falling this far, they'd be foolish to pass on him. Their desire for secondary help is immediate. As he's in that second tier of cornerback besides Gardner and Stingley, Kansas City had no choice here. The AFC West is in high demand for elite corners. The Green Bay Packers select Quay Walker, linebacker, Georgia. Green Bay, are you okay? You have desperate holes at edge and wide receiver, and you pick an inside linebacker? That's not Devin Lloyd. Walker is upside, don't get me wrong, but it strikes me as a pick for the future when the Packers need to desperately fill immediate needs. They did the same kind of shit back in 2020, and look what ended up happening to them. I know the wideouts would have been a reach here, but you need to do something about it. For the love of God! The Buffalo Bills select Kair Elam. Defensive back, 
Florida. One of the biggest concerns for Buffalo coming into the draft was at corner. Not just with Levi Wallace leaving, but let's not forget how they lost in the playoffs. Giving up two big plays within 13 seconds? That trauma needs to be addressed. Kair Elam is hopefully the answer to rectifying such woes. With Tredavious White coming back from injury, having someone to alleviate pressure in pass defense is paramount. Will Elam be it? The last corner they drafted in the late first worked out well. It was only Tredavious White. Maybe it's an omen. The Dallas Cowboys select Tyler Smith. Tackle Tulsa. Jerry Jones couldn't get his precious cave on Thibodeau, so that means they have to ignore edge rusher in the first round altogether. Is Jermaine Johnson not good enough for you? I have a feeling why they picked tackle here, though. Either to replace Lyle Collins on the right-hand side or as a cheaper replacement for Tyron Smith when he's eventually caught. I mean, come on, it's a tackle named T. Smith. Even as the discipline issues the Cowboys were known for last season. It's close enough, right? As traditional as Dallas picking incredibly talented players with off-field issues. They did just that in the second round. Ironically, an edge rusher. The Baltimore Ravens select Tyler Lindenbaum, center, Iowa. As a Steelers fan, I fucking hate this pick. If I'm a Ravens fan, I fucking love it. The best center in the draft, and arguably the most talented at any position falling into your lap when Bradley Bozeman was allowed to walk in free agency. Regardless of how they got this first, it couldn't have worked out more perfectly for them. They even managed to snag David Ajabo in the second round. Despite his devastating injury, allowing him to gestate in the Ravens system should make him a shit wrecker that terrorizes the AFC North. This is what Baltimore tends to do with defenders. A small consolation for last season's pay. The New York Jets select Jermaine Johnson. Linebacker, Florida State. We live in a world where the Jets and the Giants are making sound drafting decisions. <laughs> this is how we know COVID fucked everything up. Jermaine Johnson was looked at as a potential top 10 pick before the draft by shooting up mock boards. With his raw talent and elite upside, there's a lot you can dream about with him. And the Jets do need help at edge, even with Carl Lawson returning from injury. I had an odd feeling that the butt fumble wouldn't butt fumble this draft. Joe Douglas has been making very sound decisions, especially come draft time. Their plans all rely on Zach Wilson and Mackay Becton staying healthy. Can it be done? That's for time to decide. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Devin Lloyd, linebacker, Utah. Jacksonville did need a replacement for Miles Jack. Devin Lloyd was the best available inside linebacker when they traded up and should do well in their new system that hopefully won't suffer the same fate as many other excellent prospects that brought it from within. Regardless of pessimism, his impact should be immediate. And the Jags can't be as embarrassingly awful as they were last season. Can they? The Green Bay Packers select Devontae Wyatt, defensive tackle, Georgia. So Green Bay chooses to actively ignore wide receiver again, eh? Here's a disclaimer. Devontae Wyatt does fill a need for them to actively relieve Kenny Clark as a three tech. Wyatt should be a damn good player for the Packers. However, with this pick, they are once again ignoring the gigantic elephant in the room. I know you can argue Aaron Rodgers can throw to anyone, but those Darren Waller rumors a few weeks ago haven't had any smoke. I can say they at least did something. On day two, they traded up for Christian Watson, who will be expected to be God right off the bat. Packers are really good at prolonging agony, aren't they? We should know from how they play in January. The New England Patriots like Cole Strange. Guard, Chattanooga. A guard out of Chattanooga wasn't expected to go anywhere near this position. If you had watched a bunch of first round mock drafts, you'd think this guy was some Madden generated player with normal development. But to anyone who knows the Patriots, it's a vintage Bill Belichick pick. A guy who fills a need, fits the team's scheme fit, and will somehow be a pro bowler despite the colossal reach. We shouldn't question the hoodie. For whatever reason, it will somehow work out. The Kansas City Chiefs select. Like George Karloftis. Wow. Defensive end, All Purdue. Right. Kansas City needed a counterpart to Frank Clark on the edge. And while Karloftis isn't the sexiest edge prospect out there, he's able to get to the quarterback, which is one of the most critical skills of the modern NFL. The Boilermaker will be expected to make an immediate impact. The AFC West has become a bloodbath, and the Chiefs need to maintain superiority. Good luck, George. The AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals select... Daxon Hill, defensive back, Michigan. I'm interested to see how the Bengals see Hill moving forward. Do they see him as the replacement for Eli Apple or the replacement for Jesse Bates? I can envision him as either or. Cincinnati did need secondary help badly. Once again, Eli Apple is starting for them. 
Hill's at least versatile, so we should help Cincy in more ways than one. Either way, don't make this hard on yourselves, Bengals. Pay Jesse Bates and leave it at that. The Minnesota Vikings select Lewis Seen. Defensive back, Georgia. It's the Vikings. Why did you drop down over 20 selections? You didn't even get that good of a return from the Lions for dropping this far. Why not just take McDuffie or Hamilton where you were? I like dropping down and accruing picks when necessary, but not when the return is this meager. Not to say that Lewisine isn't a priority selection for the Vikings. Their secondary was atrocious last season. Endless cornerbacks falling to injury and aging Harrison Smith an embarrassing loss after embarrassing loss haunted them. They needed this one. All I hope is that Scene does better than the last secondary player they picked in the first round. They don't speak of Jeff Gladney here. As you may have noticed, there were many teams that didn't have selections in the first round this season. More than a few teams double and sometimes triple dipped with the first 32 picks. It's the newest trend. The Rams won a Super Bowl by throwing the future to the wind and more than a few teams followed suit. Glaring right at the Browns, Broncos, Raiders, and Dolphins. The Eagles had three first round picks and traded all but one of them away. Others like the Bears and 49ers traded their picks last season. Even then, there are still many questions that need answered. What happens with Debo Samuel? He wants paid, but San Fran is holding firm in their demands. What about Jimmy Jesus? Is he staying put? Baker Mayfield's saga is only getting worse and worse, especially after the rumored Carolina deal fell through. There are plenty of free agents still available for the taking. Not to mention new holes that have filled, I'm looking right at Arizona. The heavy part of the NFL offseason may be over, but there's still plenty that needs to shake out. For now, however, we enjoy one last segment from the 2022 NFL Draft. In my hands, I hold the most important pick of this entire round, because this pick is the only pick who will win the Super Bowl in his rookie year. With the 89th pick of the 2022 NFL Draft, the Super Bowl 57 champion Buffalo Bills select my man, Terrell Bernard, linebacker Baylor. Woo! 